hello guys i don't usually ask you to do this for me but please take a second and like the video before you watch so today i'm going to be talking about the cost of uh, building a four bedroom bungalow because that is what i've been showing you a lot i've been doing a lot of videos on construction and many have raised questions on the costs so i thought i'd do a video about that so in this video, I'm going to be discussing the costs of building at every stage. There are different stages in building. The building of a house starts with excavation. Then from the excavation, we go to the laying of the foundation. The next stage after that is the walling, which is just erecting of the walls. Once the walls are completed, we build a beam around the house, including the partitions that holds the walls firmly. And then from that stage, we go to the roofing stage. After roofing, then we start the part that we call the finishing stage. One of my viewers told me when you reach the stage, when you start calling the building materials, using English names, then you know building is getting tough. And uh, I thought about it and it's kind of true. At the early stages, we use terms like uh, mchanga, kokoto, and then you reach a stage where you talk about cabinets, you talk about tiling. So at that stage, building surely becomes really expensive. So let's start with the foundation. How much can laying the foundation of a, a four-bedroom bungalow cost? So laying the foundation includes the excavation. Excavation is generally the extraction of soil. For the laying of the foundation so the extraction of the soil will also depend on uh, the type of soil you're building on so for example if you you have a firm type of soil and the ground is firm enough then the excavation will be very minimal but if you're building on a swampy land or black cotton soil then the excavation becomes really expensive because a lot of digging has to be done to remove the loose soil and till you reach this part of the soil that is a bit firm and a bit rocky that is what the most builders are usually looking for the rocky part of the soil that is where they find the firm soil that can hold a foundation so you will notice differences in the cost of uh, laying your foundation depending on the type of soil you have. Another thing that will affect your, the cost of your foundation is also your location. So your location will determine the cost of materials like um, building in the village. Some materials are locally available like uh, sand, uh, we have stones, we have uh, ballast which is locally available. So they are much cheaper here than if you're building in Nairobi. In Nairobi I know they are damn expensive. So here we get uh, those kinds of material at a fair price. For the cost of laying foundation on a land that I would consider normal, that is land that is firm enough to hold, is roughly 400k. I'm talking in Kenya shillings, that is roughly 400,000 Kenya shillings. So the materials involved in this part are uh, sand, ballast, cement, we have the steel bars and just a few things here and there that are used at this stage they come to roughly 400k so the 400k I've given does not include labor labor is usually 30% of the material cost but then excavation does not involve material so that will be your agreement with your mason on how you split those costs next we go to walling walling is the fastest stage of building and it's the most satisfying like you wake up the walls have moved and you see your house is forming it's a very exciting stage i think that's the stage i enjoyed more when building and uh, it does not cost much so this stage will cost roughly Another 400,000, like um, for the four bedroom house I'm talking about, we used about 4,500 blocks, building blocks, and uh, 
the cost of each block was 80 Kenya shillings. Then about uh, 70 bags of cement. Then we go to the building of the ring beam. So for the ring beam, you will require sand, you will require ballast, cement. You will also require the steel bars. So building the ring beam will cost roughly 80 to 100,000, depending on the cost of material, wherever you are. After building the ring beam, then we go to the roofing stage. And before I get into that, let me just uh, highlight something. So when building the walls, please adhere to the regulations. I mean, don't build uh, too many courses. I think the standard is uh, four courses per day. Give it time to settle. Then the following day, you can build the other courses until you get to the top. So do not overdo it. That's when the house collapses because it cannot hold. On the roofing, we will need timber, we will need nails, we will need uh, then the roofing material. We have a lot of uh, roofing materials. You can go for you can go for clay tiles. There is the iron sheets. We have decra. We have uh, makuti. We have lots of roofing materials. So. Your costs at this stage will also depend on your choice of material. So for uh, our four-bedroom house, we used Decra, which cost 1.2 million for the materials. That includes the Decra itself and uh, the accessories, which include the nails, the gutters and everything. We have the timber, which is laid before we put the sheets on. So that cost 300,000 and then the labor was 250,000. There's a lot that goes into roofing and then the cost of uh, roofing is not same as cost of building. It's a bit expensive because of the dangers involved in roofing. Stage after roofing was fixing the window and the door frames. This stage also depends on your choice of uh, material and um, the sizes of your windows so like um, for the metal bars we have uh, different gauges so it depends on the gauge you choose so the higher the gauge the more expensive and then the larger the window the more material it will consume so putting up the window frames the labor and uh, what else was on the fixing all these cost 400,000. The window frames were done at around 340,000. Then there was labor, and then the fixing doesn't cost much about 5,000 shillings. And all the windows are fixed because it's just spotting, it's not like you're molding the whole thing. So, those were the costs at that stage. So, the next stage after fixing the frames was the conduiting and uh, plumbing. Conduiting is the fixing of uh, the pipes, electrical pipes. That's where the electrical wires will run throughout your house, to the switches, to the sockets and everything. At this stage, we don't fix the electrical wires, but it's just the pipes. The wires are fixed much later when the house is complete. So conduiting doesn't cost much. For our four-bedroom house, it cost just 20,000. That included the pipes plus the labor. So the conduiting and the plumbing were running concurrently. We just did the fixing of the pipes at the right places. We did not place the toilets yet and the sinks, but just placing the pipes so that we are able to plaster. Do not want to dig your walls again after plastering. So it's always important that you do this first before you get into plastering. The total cost of plumbing was uh, 180,000. That included the septic tank. So from there, then we started the plastering. The plastering was a bit expensive, I can say. It involves a lot of work because you're mainly fixing everything. This is actually the final thing you're doing to the house. So you want it to be perfect. So whatever was poorly done by the previous 
contractor it is at this stage that it is uh, corrected so it also involved a lot of material so for the plastering the entire house both inside and outside we used 350 bags of cement we used 66 tons of sand and then there's this thing we call dust which is rock sand uh, that one cost 25,000 and uh, a few about one truck of ballast which was used to fix a few things here and there so with our bungalow that is the stage that we have just completed and now we are going to the finishing stage so the finishing stage that's where we have um, tiling we have uh, the ceiling uh, putting up of the cabinets uh, that's where we also have the paintwork and a few things here and there so that's the stage we are moving to so I can say so far where we are at the moment we have spent about 4.2 million and now we are going into finishing and we always say finishing is more expensive but I don't think it's going to cost as much as what we've spent already. So let's wait and uh, hit that stage then. I will give you an update on how much we have spent on finishing. So I will give you a few tips on how to make building easy. So with the current economic times, it's hard to get maybe a lump sum to just get your house from the foundation to the finishing. So I only say start with what you have. If you have money that is enough for laying your foundation, lay your foundation and wait. Hustle again, then come back, do the walls. Do not wait. Start with what you have. The second tip I would give to someone who wants to build a house of their own. This is the biggest mistake I made and I wouldn't want you to make the same mistake. When buying land, buy land in the buy land in the rainy seasons it will it will be so easy to tell the kind of land you're buying so i made a mistake of buying land in the dry season and uh, land looked so nice i didn't know i was actually buying a swamp but i'm trying to fix it and make it as habitable as possible and uh, when i started uh, a few activities i realized the water is kind of disappearing so it doesn't get waterlogged as much as it used to be when I first bought it. So with time, there are ways to just uh, make your soil better. So don't give up. If you already have a swamp, the better part of Nairobi is built on a swamp and it's standing, it's holding, the houses are holding. So just don't give up. If you have a swamp, you will build there. But it is very expensive, I will assure you. Laying my foundation in a swamp cost me over a million and laying a normal on normal soil costs less than 500k. So it is very expensive building on swamps or on uh, black cotton soil because the soil is not firm. So the excavation, the kind of uh, steel bars you will use, the, the quantities of steel bars you will use is just crazy. And the cement and then you when you're building on a swamp you will find uh, you don't use the ordinary cement alone you will use the waterproof cement which is also very expensive and it it will just bring your costs very high so when buying land always buy land in the in the wet season that's when you can tell if you're buying a swamp or buying dry land the next tip I'd uh, like to give anyone willing to build or planning to build is buy your own materials. Never give money to your contractor to buy materials. It doesn't work in Kenya. Tried, tested, proven. Buy materials and pay them for the labor of the work they've done. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope many of those questions you're asking have been answered. If you have any, just ask in the comments, I will answer. 
and uh, if in case I missed anything also just put it in the comments I will make sure to answer it and uh, that's all for today bye bye